Hey guys, it's Chase here, and today we're gonna be talking about six different things that every new Splatoon 3 player should know. When I started playing Splatoon, I found it really fun, but it took me so long to learn everything because the game doesn't exactly do a great job of teaching you stuff. So to make that journey easier for all of you guys, I thought it would be a good idea to make this video. Do note that if you're an experienced player who had the previous games, there probably isn't gonna be much in this video for you. This is for all those players who are just starting out with Splatoon 3. Of course, I wouldn't be able to do a task like this alone, so I've enlisted the aid of my good friend Negus to help me out. We're gonna alternate back and forth between our topics, so you guys are in for a good time. All right, you ready? Let's do it. Number one, different brands of clothing are more likely to roll certain abilities. So I remember when I first started playing Splatoon, I had no clue what these brands like Rockenberg or Squid Force meant. I thought it was just a game trying to be cute and make things seem more realistic. But it turns out that each of these brands have a favorite ability that they're more likely to roll when you level up your gear. In fact, it's five times more likely to roll the favorite ability. So let's take the Splatfest tee for example. This shirt is made by the in-game brand called Squid Force. If we look at this chart, it says that Squid Force's favorite ability is Ink Resistance Up. Alright, well, I just finished a game and my shirt is about to level up, so let's see what we get. Oh, look, what do you know? It's Ink Resistance. Do keep in mind that while every brand has a favorite ability, each one also has an unfavored ability, which you have a 0.5% chance of rolling. So looking back at this chart, it's unlikely that I'll be rolling any Ink Saver main slots on this shirt. If you guys want to see a full chart of what every brand is likely and unlikely to roll, check the link in the description. Alright Negus, take it away for the second topic. Yo what's good guys and thank you for having me Chase, I appreciate it. Alright so the second point that we're going to go into is the fact that you can save your gear builds and settings so you don't have to change them over and over again. Now by pressing the minus button you're actually able to find your freshest fits which lets you save up to 5 gear builds. Now, with that, you're actually able to save your motion control settings. This is great because you don't have to change it every single time you want to go to a different weapon that you may main. The only problem is it doesn't save your aesthetics. Now, people like Chase are a little bit sad by this because he changes for each weapon, maybe each different type of build. So he has to have that. So I understand. But you can still do it with the amiibo. So, I mean, at least that's great. Nintendo really wants you to buy these amiibos. So we all know about the brand new glorious testing range that was added to Splatoon 3, which you can access inside the lobby. You can even use it while you're waiting to queue into a game. This room has a ton of options, and it even features some cool architecture where you can practice your squid rolls and squid surges. And I'm sure you guys know about the Grizzco training room as well, since it's pretty hard to ignore if you're playing Salmon Run. But what if I told you that this game had a third training room? Well, it does. If you ask Sheldon to test out a weapon you haven't bought yet, it'll take you to this third training room. You can also access it on your own by pressing Y to test a weapon in the equip menu. So as you're probably noticing, there's not really anything special about this training room. The one in the lobby beats this one in pretty much every way. Well, except for one thing. Sheldon's training room features a high speed dummy in the far back side of the room. This one moves so fast that it actually matches the speed of someone swimming. So if you really want to work on aiming at a high speed target, there may be a reason to go into this room after all. So you guys know the Nintendo Switch Online app. Many people neglect to use it because, I mean, to be honest, we think it's all useless. Like, it wasn't a great showing in Splatoon 2, but in Splatoon 3, they've actually upped the game just a little bit. The Splatoon 3 app is a lot more useful than it has been in the past, and a few of the features that I'm actually going to go over give you the ability to purchase more gear. So if you actually go into the app, there's another set of clothing that's there. Actually, and you get to purchase that gear. Then on top of that, it actually lets you check out your freshest fits. So even if you wanted to maybe make some adjustments, maybe do some theory crafting of like different types of get builds you want to do, you can actually do that. Now, on top of that, you're actually able to see your last 50 battles and actually this really cool usage wheel that shows you what weapons that you used, which one you use the most or whatever it is. And I would say that the app is a lot more useful than it was in Splatoon 2. So make sure to give it a try. 
I'm sure most of you already know that this game has a replay feature, but what some of you might not know is just how in-depth these replays go. So just in case you don't already know, you can view replays by going to the lobby terminal and selecting the view replays option. It lets you view your most 50 recent battles, and you can open a replay for any of them. Now what's so awesome about this feature is that it actually lets you view other people's perspectives. So let's say you want to watch one of the enemy's perspectives because you just got absolutely annihilated and you want to see what they did. Well just hold down ZL and press the according button that matches them at the top of the screen. You can also view the match from an overhead angle, as well as others. There's actually way more that you could do, but I wanted to keep this brief. Do note that if you have a match you want to share, you can upload it and share the code for others to view. This is going to be one of your key tools for really improving. So the last thing we're going to cover is run speed up. And the ability run speed up, as you guessed it, helps you run faster. Depending on how much you throw on, you can really see the difference. But run speed up also affects your strafing ability. So if you're using a weapon like the end zap, splatlings, you can really see a difference on going from side to side and making different types of plays and juking people. But I need you guys to understand something. This does not work with every single weapon. So rollers, brushes, and splatanas, it, it kind of doesn't make sense to use it. Now, with that being said, I would probably tell you to avoid using it on these weapons. It doesn't make sense to be the ink brush trying to run across with run speed up. Well, there you have it. Those are six tips that every new Splatoon 3 player needs to know. Hopefully there was at least one thing in here that you guys weren't already aware of. If you enjoyed the video and want to see part two with another Splatoon content creator, be sure to leave a like. Also consider subscribing for even more videos like this. And lastly, be sure to check out Negus's channel. He makes some awesome Splatoon content that you guys definitely don't want to miss out on. Alright, that's gonna be it. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.